guys, this is Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com. Today we're going to begin our look at my arrangement of Purple Rain, the instrumental arrangement uh, that you've probably seen the performance video for. Before we get into that, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't so far. And even if you are subscribed, please enable notifications. You have to ring that little bell so you know when I release uh, a new video. All right, so we're going to take a look at this opening section that you just heard at the beginning of the video. Um, now, that um, thing is basically just this little intro over the chords and then the first verse. So that little intro that I did here, I just have a nice clean tone, kind of a, kind of a box AC30 uh, patch I have here on my uh, Line 6 Helix. And um, I'm going to be doing some, have some nice reverb on it. And I do some volume swells. All right, so I have a, a neck pickup there. And I just do a bend at the 10th fret. If, you do, if you've never really done volume swells, um, you basically just do a bend. You pick the note normal and bend the 10th fret on the G string. And as you do that, you bring the you roll the volume up with it so I, pretty much as the bend goes up you roll the volume up so so from zero to ten and then i just kind of release that bend then i roll the volume back down and go down to the fifth fret and do the same thing pull off to three and back to five all right and then the same thing at the fifth fret on the d string so you kind of hear the, you know, it kind of does, it takes a while to get the full volume. And then I pull off to the third fret and then it just to kind of do this, uh, just hammer three to five on the D over to three on the G. All right, so that first phrase is played like this. Now you can base this around, the song is in B flat major, so where I'm playing it in the original key. Um, so you can visualize that as G minor um, if you want, or B flat major. It, a lot of the solos and a lot of the licks are pentatonic based, even for the vocal melodies. So we're going to be, uh, you can just think about this as the basic uh, G minor pentatonic shape where a lot of these... kind of out of that scale form. So I start out with the third fret there on the D real quick. And then you come over to the fifth fret on the G string. And you just have to match the rhythm of his vocal phrasing. And then I, when I, he kind of does a bend down. You know, when you're emulating a, a, um, a vocal melody, you gotta really gotta do a lot of bends. So I'm gonna do a pre-bend here at the fifth fret now. And resolve it back down. So then I pull off to the third fret, then over to the fifth fret on the D string, and then back three, five on the G. So we have this. And then I have a little bit of fill here after a lot of these licks just to kind of fill up the space. And it's a simple hammer three to five on the D. And back to three. And then back to that same little lick. Except now, instead of going three five at the end, it just kind of holding that five. I'm gonna hold on to three. I'm sorry. Then I have another little lick that I like to play. So that's just sliding five to seven on the G, up to six on the B. Then reverse that, slide seven to five on the G down to three on the G. And then that same little look we did before, hammer three to five on the D, back to three. Then back to the same little vocal melody. Basically the first time we played it when we resolved it to five. And then we start going to what's probably the pre-chorus. All 
right, so that is a big bend. It's a, a step and a half bend. So you gotta bend it to where it sounds like it's at the eighth fret. And just keep picking it. Release, and then do a whole step in. So now, now it sounds like a, a, just a two fret uh, bend. Pick it, and release. And then we have the uh, first chorus, which I keep subdued, and it sounds like this in the uh, performance video. So let's break that down. It's pretty simple. We're just going to play the basic melody. All right, so I'm just playing three, five, and then slide into seven, all in the G string. And then do a pre bend there at the five again. Release it down to three a couple times. And then I like to, this, this kind of melody kind of goes well with all those synthy chords that are, are under this part, uh, adds to the kind of atmospheric quality of it, which is slide, uh, hammering three to five on the D, and then move it up to seven, eight, ten. It's just something I like to do there. And then the second time I'm playing the melody, I don't do it with a slide, I do it with the bends. And then I have that fill again, hammer three to five, back to three on the D. Then I have a little bit of a longer fill. Very kind of David Gilmore-esque. So that's sliding five to seven on the G. Over to six on the B and then eight, then slide back down, seven to five, on the G, three, two, three, five on the D. Back to the vocal melody. Same as before, then now I do a quick little slide up to the 8th fret there on the A string, and then grab the 8th fret on the G, up to 10. And then back to that step and a half bend, just keep hitting it, and then whole step bend. All right, so that's the same that we've done before. Then we have verse 2, which sounds like this. So this first phrase is a little bit tricky, but I, I play it like this. So I add a little bit of a melody at the end. Like I said, there's a lot of space between his vocal lines. Um, so as a guitar instrument, I just kind of thought it was good to kind of fill up that space a little bit. But the vocal melody itself, I play it as bending on the fifth fret once. And then you pick the third fret there. That's the fifth fret on the G string. Then you pick the third fret on the B string twice. So do that twice. Then you just do the bend again and hit three once. So with this. And then you end it with a bend. 
and then end the whole lyric by playing sixth fret there on the B. And another bend and release of the fifth fret down to the three on the G. So we have this. And then I start adding a little melody, which is just do a kind of a bend and release of the fifth fret. And back up. You can do that if you want. It's just something I thought sounded cool there. Uh, and a lot of this is like kind of improvised stuff that I have to go back over and figure out what I did. All right, then we have the next vocal melody. Um, it's kind of, that was like, I only want to be some kind of friend, that, that line. And it has that little thing. So that's a pre-bend at the fifth fret on the G string. Pull off the three. Over to five on the D. Back to that three on the G. So it's really between just three notes. Then a bend and release at the five again. And then uh, a lot of times, a couple times in the song, you'll catch me just kind of improvise. Just going down through that scale for, and then usually resolving it down to this B flat. So down to the. So I don't really have a you know, set way of what I'm doing there. It's just kind of improvised, but those are the scales I'm using. All right. Um, and then the Girl I Can Never Steal You from Another. All right, so that's, once again, a bend at the fifth fret on the G. And then just a few hits there on the third fret on the B string. And then I grabbed the sixth fret there on the B. And then kind of what we did. We got other ones in just like that. Kind of resolve on that fifth fret on the G. And when it goes to the F chord in the progression, I thought it sounded good to just play this F chord down here. So we're just gonna play the uh, first fret there on the low E, uh, second fret on the G, and first fret on the B. I have to hybrid pick that, obviously. And then back to the melody for the pre-chorus. All right, now we make it to the second chorus, which is when I kick in uh, the distortion on the guitar tone and um, take everything up an octave. So that sounds like this. So this second chorus here. That's the first phrase. So we have this 15, 17 on the G. Then pick it again and release. And then I resolve it there, 15 to 17 on the uh, D string. So it's kind of just close to just an octave up of what we did before. And then instead of going up here, I have to do it over here on the G. It's just 14, 15, 17 on the G. And then the melody again. And that little, that kind of hammer of uh, 15 to 17 back to 15 on the D sets up this next lick. So that lick right there is once again just filling up space and kind of, I, I kind of bring the dynamic up, energy level up through the song as it goes. Um, so a little bit later, we're just really kind of going for it. So I'm building to that by adding a couple of little quick licks here or there. <laughs> So what I'm doing here is I'm sliding into the 15th fret there on the G string 
and then playing the octave of that note at the 18th fret on the high E string. Then I do the same thing, except I don't slide into it. The 15th fret on the D, and then the 18th on the B. Then go back to that uh, 15th fret on the D. And then I play 16 a couple times on the B string. Pull off to 15. Then play 17, 15 on the G. Then slide 17 to 19 on the G. Then back to the same vocal melody. So we played that before. And then we're going to end it with the, the 16 to 18 on the uh, B string. Then I kind of flick it down to a bridge pickup so I have this. So that is a unison bend. So I'm going to play the 16th fret there on the B string while bending the 18th fret there on the G string to the notes match. Pick that a few times, both strings. Then back to the 17th fret, whole set bend release. All right, then we make it to the next verse where I'm now playing it with uh, um, distortion a little bit, and like I said, bringing the dynamic level up. Uh, and that sounds like this. So that first phrase is pretty tricky because it's got some big bends in it. Sounds like this. All right, so that's the seventh fret on the G string. Pick it a couple times. And then you're going to bend it up a step and a half so it sounds like the 10th fret. And then pick it and bring it down. And then you have to do that if it... So you can see there I had to do some kind of bending release without any kind of bending into it. So you, to really get the vocal mount in... Oh, too far. Those last couple had to bend it without listening to it. Then back down to normal, and then back up. So it's kind of hard to do when it's isolated. When you're in the moment, it's easier when you just got your feel and your fingertips for the for the bend. But it's kind of hard when you're just kind of sitting there trying to describe it. So I need to end it with a bend and release at the fifth fret. And on the recording, I just did some some tap harmonics. If you're not used to that, you just playing 12 frets up exactly. So it's going to match the same fret mark here uh, above the double dots, so the second fret mark or the second fret mark above the double dots. If you're holding that note, just tap the fret. That's it. And then slide up to seventh fret and then have to move up here and pick the, tap the harmonic for that. That's the uh, Eddie Van Halen school of rock. So we have this. Next phrase. Uh, that, that's kind of I'm new to the loan, you know, kind of thing. So. So what I'm doing there, um, if you know that vocal melody there, um, it's similar to what we did before. Just kind of between those three notes, kind of bending into it, pre-bending into it. And then, that means you two. And that's just going three, five, seven on the G. 
back to three times. And once again, I do one of those kind of uh, improvising down the, the G minor pentatonic. So I'm resolving that B flat or, or B flat major pentatonic, if you want to look at it. And then we have this phrase. All right, so that's back at the third fret on the D string real quick. And then a few hits on the five, down to three. So you gotta really make those staccato. Then up to the fifth fret on the D, eight, a couple of hits on the five there. Then eight, up to 10, down to five. I could have did a hammer three to five on the D. Over to three. So that lick right there was. So I'm doing a bend at the fifth fret there to the third fret there on the B. And then three, five, three. And then bend at the th fifth fret on the G again. And then grab that sixth fret there on the B. Resolve it back down to the, the third fret there. Then we go up for the next chorus, um, which I now plan the harmony part in the vocal chorus because he starts adding more harmony parts uh, to the chorus sections as he goes too. So that sounds like this. So that first phrase. So that's just. You can play 15, 16, and then bend 16 on the B string, and then up to the 18th fret. Pick it uh, as it when it's after it's bent, and then do the bend again. Then pull off 18 to 15 real quick. Over to 15 on G. And I just add a little vocal, mel uh, little melody there, which is 17th bend and release, and then bend it back up. Put this all together. All right, then back to 15, 16. So that's just 15, 16 on the B. And then do the bend. Pick it again. Release. Pull off to 15. And then over 15, 17 hammer on on the D string. And back to 7, 15. And then that same lick we did earlier. And that, then back to the previous vocal melody that we played in the uh, chorus before this. And then we have this uh, really cool vocal melody that leads us into the guitar solo. Um, and it sounds like this. So that's a bit, step and a half bend there, the 10th fret on the G string. And then pull off uh, 10 to 8 there. So, just, so I went down to 8 on the G string and then pull off 10 to 8 on the D. And then do that bend again. Back to 8. But then I slide it down to uh, the third fret there on the G string. So I can do that little oblique bend down here, which is bending the fifth fret there on the G. Grab the sixth fret on the B. 
and uh, resolving it there on the uh, third fret of the G. So in the next video, I'm going to pick up from where I left off here, which is going to be the beginning of solo all the way through the end of the tune. All right, I'll see you then.